church, we greet you in Jesus' name. Welcome. Just greet your neighbor. Walk around if you can. We're going to worship the name of Jesus this morning. Amen.
Chosen generation, call for to show it. 
promises of God this morning. What are you trusting him for? He's given us the authority. Yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for favor, for open doors. Every good and perfect gift is from you, Father. Sing away.
you up. It's all about you, Jesus. You deserve the highest praise. We glorify you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for each and every person that has come to receive this morning. We thank you for your word, Father. Bless the service and we give all thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, church. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Are you all good? Say praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. Now please shake somebody's hands next to you and welcome them. Say good to see you. Say you're looking good. Say even though you don't have water, you uh, smell nice. You smell nice. Come on. Yes, so uh, it's good to see you this morning. We welcome you in the name of Jesus and uh, we're so happy to uh, have you all. Please, let's see some teeth. Come on, give me some smiles. Let's see some. Come on, yes, so uh, we are happy that you're here. Come on, let's give the team a good round of applause. We thank God for them, and uh, we appreciate every one of them. And uh, Leslie Yvonne did an excellent job with the prayer. Uh, come, let's give them a good round of applause. Uh, we thank God for them, and uh, we welcome you again in the name of Jesus. Also on behalf of Pastor Joey Governor, Pastor Brian, and myself, and our wives, and uh, everybody here, uh, all the staff and everyone, we're happy that you are here today, and uh, we pray that God will bless you. Jared is here uh, for the first time. Let's give him a that's wonderful. He's walking. He's uh, ahead of schedule, uh, only by the grace of God. Amen. And then uh, also Nathan got shot and he is here. Huh? Nathan is here. Excellent stuff. Uh, we praise God uh, for these young men. And uh, we know only the prayers of the saints and the grace of God has kept them and your children as well. And uh, so we give God all the praise and glory. Amen. And also you are here. Tell your neighbor you are here. Amen. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's good to see you all. And uh, we warmly welcome you. We pray that you'll have a blessed time and uh, that uh, you'll enjoy the fellowship today and the word. We also have our guest, Pastor Paul Quadros from uh, India. He's here. Please stand for us, sir. Come on, let's give him a good round of applause. Good welcome. Thank you, sir. We are happy to have you here. Dad will officially welcome him. Uh, but yes, uh, so God bless you. Theo and um, uh, Michelle celebrated their uh, 30th anniversary. Congratulations to them. Let's give them a good round of applause. And uh, many others, I think all the birthdays are up on the screen. If we missed your birthday, please forgive us. But a happy birthday to uh, all of you. And I think it's Rebecca's birthday, 20th Yay. birthday today. Rebecca, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, but anybody else, congratulations to you. Please remember, Monday nights is our Apostolic School of Ministry, 7 p.m. You're welcome to join at any time. And uh, we really are really, uh, learning good stuff, good current word, proceeding word that comes from the Lord. You'll be challenged and uh, you're welcome to join at any time. Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday as well at 7 p.m., we have a guest speaker, Pastor Adam. He was the first man uh, in Hungary. Uh, Pastor Adam, he's from Hungary, and those of you who don't have food at home, come and join us that evening. 
but yes, he's from Hungary, so uh, he'll be coming with some guests as well. We're going to be uh, blessed, and it's good to uh, have guests. Sometimes they can inspire us and share with us their experiences. And then remember, Wednesday is the intercession as well. And then uh, also, uh, there's youth meeting. Uh, I heard this week that, uh, what's his name? Cameron preached at the youth meeting on Friday. Cameron preached. And I saw some clips of the powerful sermon. We thank God for our young people, man. And the young people, God is blessing them and raising them up. And we thank you, parents, for the excellent job, Jason and Romain. Uh, all of you for the excellent job you're doing for uh, your kids. And then, uh, yes, I think that's it. Uh, oh, Easter weekend, we have our services Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But we'll give you more details. But please put your hands thank together you. for that. Thank you. Hallelujah, Dad. everybody. Say, praise the Lord. Say, God is good. Say, I'm blessed. Highly favored. Amen. Next week is Easter, a week after that. Isn't it good? We make no apologies. There is only one way, and that's Jesus Christ the Lord. Say, hallelujah. Isn't that true? He said, I am the way. There's no other God. We don't compromise him. That's what the Easter weekend is going to be about just glorifying the Lord Jesus. Aren't you happy that you're here this morning? And what about those two young men? The Lord bless them. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. If that's not all, then, then Roderick buys this lovely Bucky. Give him a good round of applause. Rebecca's birthday and all the rest of it. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, we don't want to take the preaching time, so we're going to do the trash is out. See? More ways than one. Tell your neighbor that trash is out. Hallelujah. You can interpret that any way you like. Trash is, we rise above the trash. Uh, Kerda's uh, cleaning program is gone out. Paul Codras is with us this morning. Paul Codras is a great friend of the ABC Forum and Dr. Segi and ourselves, and we're thankful to God for him this morning. Paul Quadros is married for around uh, 34 years. His wife, Decima, was here just now. She's gone to preach at Tony Haripasad's church. He's, uh, he's blessed. He has uh, three children, Danita, Daniel, and Donia, and four grandchildren. His wife moves in the prophetic ministry and leads in worship and intercession. He oversees a large network of churches uh, at New Life Movement International in Mumbai in India, it was founded by the late Reverend S. Joseph, spiritual father of Paul. Paul is a wonderful man. He was a doctor saying his church last week. He's been coming to South Africa for many years now, and he has a tremendous ministry. Uh, deals a lot with prayer, intercession, prophetic, all the rest of him. And this morning, I believe the Lord will bless you. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Don't miss a service. You miss a service, you might miss the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And next Tuesday night, we have Pastor Adam. Adam is from Hungary. We spent a lot of time with him touring all of Europe. Pastor Adam is coming with two other guests, three other guests. They'll be here Tuesday night. Don't miss it. God can do anything. Some of you people have a lot of time on your hands. Other people say there's no time. I told you before, saying that there's no time is only a myth. There's no such thing as no time because one of these days something happens, you'll have to lay on the doctor's table and you've got time for that. The Lord will bless you and the Lord will honor you and the Lord. I was going to say something else. Yeah, yeah. Stand up, Mrs. Uh, Devon. Stand up. Mrs. Devon, stand. Devon's wife, yeah, stand. This is the lady who was fighting with the police. Turn around. You saw her on TV. Isn't that that lady? Yeah, yeah. You were the one, eh? You were the one. <laughs> She wasn't fighting with the police. She was heading the. She was heading the protest. Oh, she was part of the. Pro the yeah, she was one of the protesters. They interviewed her, and everybody is bowing before this morning. Give them your autograph. Get all the money. Hey, look! When there's something wrong, you have a right to protest. You must do that. Don't stay at home and and, and duck and hide and all that. But do that. We're going to call Paul Cadros to come and minister to us. Come on! Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for your glory and your grace and your fire that is in our hearts. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is our teacher, mentor, trainer, revivalist in our midst through us. 
and we thank you that you've given us a wonderful grace to glorify you jesus on this earth in jesus name amen every services everywhere are getting strengthened getting blessed and the whole church of jesus christ is rising in great love unity purity humility amen. grace of jesus christ is poured on the body of christ and the fire of god is not only gripping the earth gripping the nations gripping his people in south africa i'm getting only three prayers the the fire of the holy spirit is falling on this earth falling on the nations and falling upon his people that is in the last trip but this trip i'm feeling like south africa is catching the fire god is going to shake this nation hallelujah god is going to shake this nation this nation has to be transformed wherever there is a water problem i think people of god should fast and pray or there is a electricity problem because these are all very important essential things one day in our city there was no water and i said lord i am not going to drink the water till you give the water in our city it took many hours so i understood what really a thirst means what really sorry what really thirst means so god's glory is here what i'm going to learn with you and discuss with you and uh, understand what are the stages of our spiritual maturity and today we can evaluate our own lives to know are we walking in maturity and are we growing in christ we can check our lives today and i have some points to share with you evaluate our own lives we can do wonderful diagnosis you know last sunday i was in a doctor's chair and two sundays before that i was in a church in uh, south india we had gone on a mission and there were full of doctors in the church <laughs> very sophisticated when when your people are very sophisticated and very educated it is difficult for them to teach but you are not like that you better put on your seat belt and listen what the lord has to speak to us today to his servants because jesus is the one who is here and he is there to minister to us now when you started your spiritual journey how was your hunger for god my son is a pastor now is taking a church and my eldest daughter also is taking a church but when my son when he was very small now he is 32 but that time very small his mother left him with me one day and had gone out so and he was bitterly crying very bitterly crying and he was bitterly crying i was looking at his eyes full of tears he was looking somewhere and crying again and again so bitterly he was crying i said where is looking at then suddenly i realized he was looking at the milk bottle <laughs> so i took that milk bottle and gave to him the way he sucked the milk bottle in those days the milk i mean the nipple went inside I don't know now there may be some modern bottles where nipples are not going inside so that time i i came to know or i heard lord saying to me that first timothy first peter chapter 2 verse 1 says that we must get rid of all malice all slander all hypocrisy this is very important and desire a pure milk of god's word a crave for the spiritual milk of god's word like a newborn babes i believe all of us all of us who are born again when we were born of god and when our hearts were set on fire there was such a hunger and such a thirst in our hearts that we were reading the word of god and listening to the word of god and and praying day and night i mean every one of us you you know you see your own life when you were touched initially when you had that true born again life not a hypocritical life because i was a hypocrite for a few years i was a submarine christian you know i used to come up on sunday and monday i used to go down <laughs> then again sunday i will appear and sometime i i could not appear actually <laughs> but thank god all of you you are appeared today <laughs> and thank god that you are not a submarine christian <laughs> 
So I realized I was a submarine Christian and that's the reason that I was backslidden a little bit and I was about to lose faith in Christ. But thank God, because of the prayers of precious people of God, I repented, surrendered my, hundred per, my life 100% to God. Within two days, I got filled with the Spirit and started the ministry and took a second baptism. Sorry for that. <laughs> second baptism was needed for me because I was so convicted of my sinful life. So I thought I better take a second baptism. I told my pastor, Pastor, I already been baptized in 1981. And, uh, but uh, I am really guilty about I know, going away from the Lord and sinning against mm -hmm. I know, going into the world, can I take a second baptism? He says, not needed because you were born again when you took the baptism, but just to clear your conscience, if you want to take, no problem. So I'm, I don't recommend anybody second baptism, <laughs> but repentance is very important. Surrender is very important. And when I took the second baptism, thank God that I had a prophecy that I will take his word to many nations. And when I received the prophecy, it took almost 22, 23 years for me to be transformed and to become Christ-like in my heart and attitude. And, and I started going to other nations from 2017, uh, 2007 onwards. And I started fulfilling the call, destiny God has for us. What I want to say is, when we truly repent, truly repent, from the day that I 100% repented, surrendered, and, and became fire for God, I mean, Still, I want to have some more fire now from the pastor. When I see him, I know I would like to be like him, fit and smart, <laughs> you know, full of zeal. And we should not lose that initial love and the fire and the hunger and the thirst that we have for God. The day that we lose that hunger and thirst and love for God, we are not matured. Don't think, so, oh, I am 30, 40 years in the Lord. We are only in the Lord warming benches, warming chairs, nothing else. Wasting time. But if you have lost the hunger for God, then we have lost our maturity. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 that we must eat the meat of the word and able to distinguish good and evil and walk in the righteousness of God. Hunger for righteousness like Jesus. See, Jesus love righteousness and hate wickedness and that anointing of Jesus is coming upon the church that we are getting the sevenfold anointing of Jesus and we are learning to walk in the fear of the Lord and delighting ourselves in the fear of the Lord as a result we too are craving for righteousness and the word of God says they that crave for righteousness be filled and be fruitful and so number one stage that we have passed through I believe all of us have gone through that we have been so hungry, thirsty, craving for the milk of God's word. And we have learned to eat the meat of God's word. And we are growing in maturity. So we can evaluate today morning, are we growing in maturity or not? Hallelujah. And when our love grows for each other, love is a mark of maturity. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1 to 12, and even till 16, we see there is a kind of a pattern that a believer goes through that he realizes that he's risen with Christ. And he's not only died with Christ, he is buried with Christ, he's risen with Christ. Now he's walking in the resurrection life of Christ. And when we walk in the resurrection life of Christ, we have a heart and mind set on things above, not on the things of this earth. If our minds are keeps on going up and down, morning we are in the spirit, afternoon we are in the flesh, evening again we are little bit in the spirit, night again we go into the flesh, and that means we are still struggling and we are not learned to maturity because we are still not learning to walk in the resurrection life of Christ. I don't know about you. Are you getting up in the morning and struggling to get some Holy Spirit in you? Or are you in the spirit in the night before sleeping and morning when you get up, there is a worship in your mouth? Are we struggling survivalist Christians or believers or are we revivalists? Are we prioritizing the presence of God? Where is the sound when you get up in the morning? Is it in your kitchen? Struggling to eat or cook or yelling at each other? Before you make breakfast, 
they're running to work or there is worship in your house when you get up in the morning is there is heaven on earth in a house oh i don't know about you i'm not very spiritual there are you know but something that we have learned is when our children were small suddenly my son got up and started putting the songs worship and suddenly uh, worship erupted and our children started dancing my wife started dancing and then i was seeing all four of them dancing i also joined dancing <laughs> and we all five of us started dancing and as we were dancing i was hit with the revelation of god and the revelation was so profound i understood the blessedness of martyrdom of persecution which is one of the blessing that we all have to enjoy we all want all other blessings we want good cars fancy cars big houses big you know gorgeous clothes and everything that we want best but when it comes to suffer for righteousness suffer for the gospel for the truth oh we don't want that but the sign of maturity as paul writes in colossian uh, philippians chapter 3 that i want to know him enjoy his intimacy every day and walk in his resurrection i want to know him and the power of his resurrection the third thing we want to stop i don't know about you when i was a young christian i used to only pray these two things lord i want to know you and the power of your resurrection when the fellowship of suffering comes i should stop i not no, no suffering lord but a true maturity is that we want all three things and the true sign of maturity is we learn to rejoice in the sufferings book of james is a book of maturity and he writes in chapter 1 verse 2 that count it all joy my brother and also sister and we are not only your brother and we are sister and also we are full of fire apostolic prophetic reformation whatever we say but we are full of fire and count it all brother and sister and that when you face different varieties or kinds of trials or testings if you see and look at different versions it gives you full picture different kinds of difficulties full from all sides sometimes every kind of storm sometimes hitting at you but because you are growing in maturity every storms when comes in your life no matter what it is worship erupts worship erupts songs erupts i can give you hundreds of testimony if you are ready to sit till the evening worship erupts song erupts because the holy spirit is there waiting before the storm got hit the greatest storm of the wind of the holy spirit takes over you because for those who walk in the spirit there is joy in their hearts in the midst of troubles and when the holy spirit enables apostle james to write this that brother and sister and count it all joy when you face all kinds of troubles testing trials or temptation or difficulties when we we are able to worship god or when we are able to rejoice there's a time that little even the little faith that we have in our hearts is tested and it produce endurance hallelujah it for some people it may take time some people cry weep like a martha mary it took four days for them to rejoice and in spite they loved jesus in spite jesus loved them but when this kind of thing happened in their home when lazarus was sick and when finally lazarus died they lost all hope and still four days they were weeping and crying and in spite they loved jesus and jesus loved them they had not come to maturity because holy spirit has not yet come till the day of pentecost and they have not grown in maturity they were just like you know peter who was buffeted and he didn't have maturity to wait on god and the time of his test the what happened was they only thinking lord if you would have been here my brother wouldn't have died but jesus was saying it's good that i am not there so that you may know who i am so 
so when we rise up to maturity we learn to rejoice in our troubles and we must ask the holy spirit to give us that joy if there is no joy and if we are grieved in the time of troubles just linger in the presence of god till god gives us joy in our hearts actually the joy should come immediately immediately when the trouble hits just before the trouble hits joy takes over just before the temptation hits joy takes over just before any storm hits the holy spirit is in control of you that shows that we are in the spirit that shows we are in the spirit but if the storm already hit us and we are already out of control and sometimes we have a habit to pray god you take control you are in control you are in control i said don't pray like that if god is in control of everything today there wouldn't have been mess god is not in control of everything because god wants to take control of you or he wants you to be come under his control if we being a sons of god who supposed to move in the power of god who supposed to walk in the spirit supposed to come under the leading of the spirit supposed to come under the control of the holy spirit we are not under his control and we are saying god is in control god is in control what god is in control sorry for shouting we must come under the control of the holy spirit every day and the sign that we are in the control of the holy spirit or leading of the holy spirit if there is a song in our mouth there's a prayer in our heart i was telling somebody yesterday stop speaking wrong things about your nation there's a sign of immaturity those who are not those people who are not really praying for the nation they talk like that they're wasting time they keep on saying that wrong this wrong this is wrong government is wrong minister is wrong baba we are supposed to we are called to pray for them the sign of maturity is that we are praying for our authorities and we believe that god has placed them and god wants us to honor them submit to their authority pray for them that we may live a godly life and because we are not praying and interceding for our nation for our government for our authorities and we don't know what is submission first of all we don't know what is submission in the family in the house and then we don't know what is submission in the church because those only those who have learned to submit to one another in reverence to god in the home and husband learn to walk, love their wives with the christ grace with christ like heart and wives who have learned to respect and honor their husbands oh, very difficult according to me is very difficult one of the one of the most difficult thing in the world <laughs> and if only that happens in the home i think so heaven has come <laughs> heaven has come in the house and if the heaven has come in the house then there is a heaven in the church then even if you don't even if you don't sing many songs even first song will hit us first song is enough to enter the holy of holies because we are already in the spirit we already in the holy place most holy place in the house already while coming to the church there's already worship in our car there's no gossiping in the car and after that when we return back from the service there is no slandering in the car there is a worship in us because the worship has already began in your heart in the morning it has already began in your family in the morning and then when you come to the church you are full of fire and it doesn't take time for god's glory to man- manifest otherwise such an anointed woman of god like our sister what a anointing grace she carries she has to take you inside from outer court to the inner court from the inner court to the holy place to the most holy place and i don't know how many have entered today or not <laughs> it will take long time praise god for such anointed worship leaders such anointed worship but this kind of anointed worship not supposed to be for you it is for those who are coming fresh newly you, you we should have been already in the worship before coming the worship began early morning when you when the holy spirit awaked you in fact if the holy spirit has to awake you early in the morning and give you the deep intimacy with for you and you have begin to intercede for the church and the body of christ before coming i don't know about you when i was a young boy 
I used to fast and pray for every believer in the church. Even I was not a reader, I was sitting in the back. I couldn't go to the service without praying and fasting because a young boy not married, fasting was easy for me. <laughs> but I used to pray and fast for everybody and I used to go and sit at the back but, but the fire was burning in my heart. And if the, our churches, you know, they used to give some time to exhort and I used to come forward and when I opened the mouth, you know, my pastor used to say, continue, continue, continue and preach the message. <laughs> You should tell me to continue as a message. Those pastors are very less nowadays. No, not I am talking. <laughs> I am not talking about this pastor. He's an excellent pastor. Because when you really pray whole week for the every members in your church, this is a small number. You can know everybody's name, and if you don't know to pray, just take everybody's name and start praying for everybody. Two three hours really easily will you be able to pray. And 2-3 hours are not much. Out of 24 hours, hardly 10%. When you bring in 10% to the Lord, bring 10% of your time also to God. Of course, it's not a limited to 10%. In the New Testament, the whole heart we must give to God. We must give our time, heart to God. We must give our time to God. We must give our talent to God. We must give our treasure to God. Much more than 10%. Sorry, I'm not saying I'm talking about ties, but when God spoke to me, before I could resign my job, in 1992 when my two children were small and I was struggling with finances and I said Lord why I'm taking two three services on Sunday going weekly outreaches taking two three cell groups in the weekdays fasting and praying but why I'm not able to pay the bills young just married just you know two three years married two small children third is yet to yet to be born and you know God what God impressed in my heart. I don't know why I'm talking about finance, maybe needed. God told me, double your prayer life and double your giving. I said, double? I'm already giving almost 15%. I said, what double? Money, is, salary is not enough to pay my bills, what double? I mean, and any, everywhere I used to go, they used to talk about finance those days. I don't know. I went for a seminar, they talk about giving, I got upset on them. And my loving pastor at that time told, Paul, I think God is teaching you to give more. I said, what give more? <laughs> but one day I was praying in the kitchen because I had to shift the house that time. And there was no place outside. So I was praying in the kitchen, kneeling down. I heard the voice of God. Double your giving. And the time I started obeying, doubling my prayer life, and doubling my giving, it took many years of transformation, character to be developed. But one of the, one of the secret of abundance is walk in godliness, walk in character, walk in generosity, you shall have in abundance. So not only that we learn to rejoice in our troubles, we rejoice in our giving, God loves a cheerful giver, but a maturity is, is seen in our character. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 says, put on compassion, kindness, Humility, meekness, gentleness, patience, and love that holds everything in unity, holds all these virtues because love is a mark of maturity. And one thing you all couples, I request you all couples, including me and my wife, because the day of marriage, I started studying about 1 Corinthians 13, what love is. And I think one Thing that all the couples must often go through 1st Corinthians 13 love incredibly patient <laughs> and we know this is the area we are tested again and again incredibly patient and the impatience of your spouse is the opportunity for us to grow in patience your spouse is impatient. Yes. <laughs> <Somebody says that. laughs> then it is opportunity for you to grow in patience. Don't look at her or him as Are you are impatient, you are a nut. <laughs> it's opportunity for us to grow in patience. Every time when we speak, see a spouse or anybody impatient, that's a time for us to grow in patience because their impatience helps us to be patient. 
imperfectness of our spouse is opportunity to grow in pain perfectness every struggle that we face in life is opportunity for us to grow and some of us we need that kind of spouse to keep us humble and to learn patience otherwise we would have been very proud especially some of the husband like us like me thank god for a wonderful wife that keeps us humble because you need somebody to stamp your tail to see are you alive or dead <laughs> and thank god there are people who keep on testing us and if we, if you don't find them in the house you'll find them in the church <laughs> and if you don't find them in the church we'll find them in the world but everywhere no matter at home we must practice at home first then we must practice in the church secondly then from monday to saturday in the world we can shine for glory because there are many people in our workplace there are there to test our patience test our humility test our maturity but how can we impact this world for christ how to impact the world for christ i don't want to brag about myself but today i'll give me little permission to brag because i am not part of this part of this church but not here all the time in a company every person who is walking in that working in a department was got touched because the minute i landed in a department before resigning my job that is i'm talking about 84 85 i was led to intercede for every person in our department and god started giving me that love and patience to reach out to all of them through my work of course excellent work and the afternoon little lunch lunch time i used to get i used to go to a corner place to find a place to spend time in reading the word and prayer I should think that half an hour I'll spend time with the Lord and half an hour I'll go to canteen eat but most of the time when I take the small bible go to there some corner place where nobody can see me stand in the little bit place and read the bible and pray I used to be on tears and I used to forget the time by the time I finished the prayer canteen is closed and I used to go back to work fasting and and that gave real breakthrough <laughs> very easy to fast before lunch you start reading the bible and pray don't look at your watch then the fire catches you that's wonderful to give up your lunch and spend more time with god and when you give up your lunch or a breakfast or a dinner and spend more time with god your prayers will be double i remember in somewhere in 2017 me and my daughter last daughter who was a missionary to jordan to take care of her uh, syrian refugee children before that she went to mosambik Heidi Baker she was trained as a missionary she and I had come here my my wife had to wife had to go to Australia at that time so we both were here and I got a message from India for one of our family member a some kind of accusation against some a character and that message grieved me so much that for sort of, for a moment I was a little bit discouraged but when i was sitting in one of the church big building 5000 capacity building there in tongat i was sitting there in the morning prayer i used to go there at 9 o'clock and spend some time with god and that afternoon time came and they brought a nice tea and biscuit for me i suddenly remembered the lord and i took that biscuit and that tea and i thank god for his sacrifice and his shed blood the finish of the cross in other words i broke bread you know and thank god and i ate that biscuit drank that tea and then i was already grieved in my heart but that biscuit and tea brought something revelation in me i said this is enough i no need to have a lunch now let me pray more because anyway i was under storm now in the storm i learned to fly and i spent more time with god and after few hours i started dancing all around the building thanking god for my problem for my storm and i was led to intercede for all the children of god on this earth for god to transform them in the midst of their storms Amen. and every day i started doing it now i got the test i no need to have lunch biscuit and tea is enough but more than that breaking of bread and praying and thanking god so every day i used to come in the morning till the evening and i used to dance all over the hall because that the whole church building is so big you know oh within two weeks the storm that meant to destroy me god used the storm to transform me 
and along with me i prayed for every child of god on this earth to get transformed and so the body of christ is also trans- get transformed along with your problem so your problem is for good for you actually <laughs> because when in a problem we understand the purpose in our problem and we rise up above the problem and take hold of the purpose in our problems we are promoted in our problems our problems are not meant to destroy us or our difficulties are not meant to destroy us the difficulties are meant to transform us that we would be matured and lack nothing it is says in in james chapter 1 verse 2 3 4 we will be missing nothing lacking nothing and we will be matured a character will be matured we will be perfected in our midst of our problems perfected in our midst of our problems developed in the time of our difficulties transformed in the midst of our storms and the holy spirit that gives us joy and gives us intimacy with him and when we rise up in intimacy that we rise up in intercession for each other Amen. every problem that we go through use that problem and start praying for everybody in the world <laughs> devil has to run away from you why he says oh, yo 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 if i bring any problem to this person he will start praying for everybody i better don't come to him you no need to cast out the devils and demons they'll automatically run away from you because you are using your situation to transform others and your own lives by using the particular storm that you are facing or trouble that you are facing or problem that you are facing holding on to the purpose that god has in your problems and you begin to pray through your problem you are getting matured in your situation and you are promoted in your problems and then you become professors professors now i am one of the professor along with your past your problems will make you professors oh you're so sad now looking you don't rejoice in your problems sign of rejoicing in our difficulties is a mark of maturity that's what hebrew chapter 5 apostle paul is writing up to now you should have been professors but still now you need milk because there is infighting sometime there is jealousy among you first corinthians chapter 3 are you not mature are you not still selfish are you not still children fighting in one another some says apollo some says paul are we have that still in our mind that we take sides of people and compare ourselves comparing ourselves with others is a sign of immaturity but we are getting mature see we are getting mature yeah all over the world the bride of christ the body of christ getting mature every day you and i we are must rise up you know ephesus paul is writing that he is travailing in prayer for you so that you may stand strong in the will of god and be mature and he himself apostle paul himself writing in colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 that i pray i kneel before the father in heaven and earth and pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will i read out that in in a translation that is for you to understand better he says this way in this translation which i am reading in a, a passion in this passion translation says since we first heard about you it's colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 we were kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of god's pleasure over your lives that you may be filled with the knowledge of god's will with all spiritual wisdom and understanding making you reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding we pray that you would walk in the ways of true righteousness pleasing god in every good thing you do then you will become a fruit bearing branches yielding to his life maturing in the rich experience of knowing god if you and i have to grow in maturity we must take hold of all these apostolic prayers 2009 we were traveling from dubai to uh, johannesburg and the minute the flight took off we were arrested by god we were arrested by god for almost 5 6 hours we couldn't go and all these apostolic prayers came in my heart and i was led to intercede these prayers again and again and again over the global body of christ when they announced johannesburg is about to we are about to land i was strengthened in my spirit praying all these prayers again and again over the body of christ for 5 6 hours and i sensed such a anointing 2009 
now till almost 15 years we have been praying this prayer thousands of times and if we have to grow in maturity take all these prayers pastor knows all those prayers he's been using it for so many years and one of that prayer is Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 19 Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 Colossians Philippians chapter 1 9 and 10 and again second Thessalonians chapter 1 11 and 12 all these prayers take hold of it and pray for yourself and your family and for the church and for the city church and for the church in 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 the in this nation and church globally but start with you first if you're not praying for your own family and your own church i don't think so god will mature you to pray for the church in the city and church in the nation and church in the nations and start using this prayer praying again and again and again and again you know when Kenneth Hagin prayed this one prayer. Philippians, sorry, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 19 to God to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. When he repeated his prayers, I think so hundreds of times or maybe thousands of times, he says his ministry from local become global. And if you want to grow in maturity, if we all must memorize these prayers and pray these prayers over and over and over and again, again and again. If you're praying in tongues, fantastic. Pray and travail in tongues. Stop that 10 minutes, 15 minutes prayer. Nowadays, church, I don't know what is happening to them. They're like babies praying for shopping lists. You can't get into the Holy of Holies in, a, in your 15, 20 minutes prayers. You need to get into the Spirit, get into the Holy of Holies. When the Holy Spirit begins to pray through you, when the, when the prayers begin to come from your heart, and then you are you break through in your prayers. Because why we break through? We need to break through for to be blessed with every blessing that we have in Christ. The reason that we are blessed with every blessing and we are not able to enjoy those blessings because we are blocked in those blessings because we are not broken through in those blessings. We have to break through because only when we break through we can go through brokenness. Without the breakthrough no brokenness. Brokenness in the sense that area that we are blocked in our blessings, when we break through in that area, we are broken in the sense we have learned self-denial in that area. We are dead in that area. Think about your marriage life. Think about your finance life. Think about your ministry life. Think about your character in certain areas. Think about certain addictions and habits that we are still struggling with. And we are not able to give up. There are certain areas certain addictions and certain habits which are unhealthy, ungodly, including unhealthy food and un unhealthy drinks, sorry to say that, which is making us sick. We are still not able to give up that attraction, addiction, habit, because that particular area we are not broken. And that particular area we are not learned to deny ourselves. That particular area we have not learned to obey God. And that particular area we are not become Christ-like. Hence that particular area we are still blocked. And we are not able to enjoy the blessings. If you and I have to rise up in enjoying the every blessings that God has for us. We must rise up in intimacy with God. Intercession for each other. Get deeper in understanding the revelation of God's word. And begin to practice what we are praying practice what we are preaching and then rise up in transformation breakthroughs Christ likeness and one of the sign of maturity is this James chapter 3 verse 2 says if you are matured in the words that we say if you have learned to bridle our tongue then we can we can control the world around us we say God is in control but God wants us to be in under his control and God wants first we must learn to take control of our tongue then through our tongue we can control things around us because we are filled with the spirit and our words have power when we get upset what do we say is very important there we come to know now wait, from today you make one list whenever you upset what do you say you may forget afterwards tell somebody to record you know let us do some recording at least, if not in the church, at least in the house. And afterwards, let us evaluate when we are angry, what do we say? 
and if we note all the words that we speak whole day how much words are from the word of god how much words are according to the promises of god how much word we have spoken that are really killing us because we are a spirit filled believers our words are important we are saved because we confess jesus and believed in our heart now after getting filled with the spirit we keep on speaking things that are not right not good for over each other we are actually enemies using those words to destroy us and we have become prophets of our own future we no need any prophets to come and prophesy over us because we have been prophesying every day over us and then we ask others to pray for us and profess our word is no use if we don't speak the word of god over our situation because a mark of maturity is that we have learned to take the shield of faith against the fiery darts of the enemy we have learned to put on the helmet on our heads that means our thought life of our control then we have learned to speak the word of god as a sword of the spirit and learn to pray in the spirit in all occasion all kinds of prayers hallelujah and this armor is very important for us because only when we learn to walk in the truth in sincerity we are learn to walk in the righteousness of god and putting together the truthfulness and sincerity and the righteousness we are learn to walk in the peace and putting all these three things together we have a faith to hold again because if we if we lose our righteousness we have no faith if we have no peace we have no faith anybody anyone in us among us who have lost their peace do they have faith they are full of doubts and fear that means the truthfulness righteousness gives us peace is is i think it's it's really you know synonymous i mean it is on a, on a on a line it is very well put by the holy spirit that that when we have a peace when we learn to walk in the peace we are able to hold the shield against every fiery dart of the enemy because those who have lost their peace lost their righteousness that's why kingdom of god is a righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost righteousness and peace put together we have a joy in the holy spirit and when we have joy when we have peace when we have righteousness we have faith no fiery darts of the enemy negative thoughts negative words negative things can affect us even we can overcome the arrows of the enemy against our health against our family against our children and grandchildren against our nation hallelujah against our nation because this nation needs prayers now this nation is going to be transformed this nation is going to be blessed this nation is going to be saved because you and we are rising in maturity and we are now speaking the word of god over our nation and interceding for our nation along with learning the word practicing the word we are becoming praying warriors because for us to for our, our, our prayers to get answered jesus said if you have learned to abide in me and my words abide in you then whatever you shall ask it shall be done unto you that is a condition for our answer prayer that we have learned to abide in christ means we have learned to walk in the spirit we have learned to remain and depend on him and his revelation has come to us and when we get a revelation that he speaks to us he tells us you know i'm telling you about one nation about our nation when one day i went to a park to sit and pray god holy spirit just told me 50% of the nation is going to be saved 50% of india is going to be saved so don't believe in 2% 3% now just thank god 50% <laughs> hallelujah and when a 50% is going to get saved you can easily come With chartered flights you can come to india and india can also come with chartered flights we no need to worry we can be both great you know partnering nations of india and south africa because most of you are from indian origin your motherland hallelujah so rise up in intercession pray for one another go deep into the word change the way we speak because the sign of maturity is we have learned to bridle our tongue hallelujah and we may falter here and there but don't worry ask god to forgive you but rise up in speaking the promises of god and when we begin to speak the promises of god over our nation over our lives over our family we grow in maturity and that is one of the way that we can hold the shield against enemy schemes put on the helmet because a thought life is come in order and then we are able to burst forth in using the word as a sword because the word has become sword in our hand now hallelujah sword in our mouth now 
and then we are led to pray in the spirit in all occasion all kinds of prayers in the spirit making intercession that is a mark of maturity god bless you shall we rise to our feet and pray? just raise your hand and say thank you lord for making me mature jesus you have began this good work in me and you will fulfill it your verses in philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says the god who has began a good work in us will bring it to maturity god who has begun a good work in us is maturing us is maturing his children is maturing in children and i'm seeing god is working in your life i see that your marriages are getting healed the pain is disappearing in your marriage for years together some of us have kept that grudge or that pain or that dissatisfaction that we have been still speaking wrong things about our partners my wife is not here but usually she takes a song in worship after we preach but next time i try to bring her but there is a glory of god in this place god is bringing healing if your partner is sitting side of you hold his hand hold her hand and ask god to give you grace now onwards to speak good things about your spouse in the house and in outside and you husbands we all husbands pray for that love that god would has poured in our hearts by his spirit that we may be sacrificially able to love our wives is easy to love others but not our wives our wives are our strength others can be our weakness jesus grace is sufficient for us to love our wives as christ loves and when our wife sees that christ likeness in us that little christ likeness in us that we are humble we are self denial that we are caring and kind to each other compassionate to one another there's a respect that comes in their hearts towards us that they are able to tenderly devote it to us and you wives even your husband is not in the place of maturity you are a matured bride of christ you have that intimacy with god how can you go to god in prayer when you constantly nag your husband will god listen to your prayers all wives here let us repent of all that kind of behavior that we have against our husbands and children that are here honor your children honor your parents that says the greatest privilege that we have that to honor our parents bless them honor them take care of them if they're old there's no greater thing that we can do more than honoring our parents taking care of them don't worry how much money they have how rich they are honor them with your finances you give to god generously cheerfully honor your parents bless them financially even if they have enough you sow your seed blessing them sow your seed in your church sow your seed your to your spiritual parents and honor your parents loving them caring for them and blessing them speaking tenderly to them your grandparents too God is bringing great maturity in this church. This church is already mature, walking in maturity. There are mature servants of God here. The wonderful church of Jesus Christ. And now the that maturity is increasing in our families. Every families are here getting healed. Every families are getting healed here. Every husbands is a special love god is pouring in your heart for your family even for your children for your children you parents are able to so tenderly take care of your children and grandchildren 
but there is a greater blessing that are released in our family lives. A character is getting transformed now onwards. Every time in storm, it's you. You'll have a song in your mouth. You'll have a prayer in your heart. God has bestowed a special grace upon you to be in His presence even before you sleep. To be in His presence even in your sleep in the night. That God is beginning to give you dreams and visions of His kingdom and even the tragedies that are enemy tries to bring in, in your family. You have already been warned in your dreams so that you can pray through and protect yourselves from any tragic situations. What enemy is scheming against you, God already knows it. And God has raised banner against the, against those storms, against those floods that enemy is bringing. When the enemy comes like a flood, God will raise a banner against it. Spirit of God will raise a banner against it because he has already given you in a vision, in your dream. He has spoken to you what to do. He awakes you in the midnight to pray for your family, pray for the body of Christ, pray for your nation. There is a fire falling on you. There's a fire falling on you. There's a fire falling on you. Jesus is baptizing us with the fire and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and fire. The, our nation is catching the fire. Our nation is catching the fire. The fire is falling on our nation. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord.